Hello, welcome to Open Tira. Today we're exploring Rwanda, the land of a thousand hills, where resilience and beauty converge. Stay with us to learn about more this country's painful history and journey toward a brighter future. We'll explore its geography, history and culture. Rwanda is a small, landlocked country located in central eastern Africa. It borders Uganda to the north, Tanzania to the east, Burundi to the south and the Democratic Republic of the Congo to the west. Rwanda has a total area of 10,169 square miles and is known as the land of a thousand hills due to its very hilly terrain. Rwanda sits just south of the equator in East Central Africa. It can be divided into a number of natural regions. The low-lying Congo-Nile divide runs north to south through western Rwanda with steep slopes down to the shores of Lake Kivu in the west and more gradual slopes down to the eastern savanna. The largest mountain range is the Virunga Mountains along the border with Uganda and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The largest body of water in Rwanda is Lake Kivu, which lies along the border with the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The largest rivers are the Nyabarongo River and Akagera River, which feed into the Nile Basin. The Akagera River forms part of Rwanda's eastern border with Tanzania, Rwanda has a population of about 12 million people. The Rwandan people are composed of multiple ethnic groups, religions and languages. The two main ethnic groups in Rwanda are the Hutu and the Tutsi. The Hutu comprise about 85% of the population, while the Tutsi make up 14%. The Twa people, a pygmy group, comprise only 1% of the population, Though the groups share a common language and culture, there have been long-standing tensions between the Hutu and Tutsi. This culminated in the Rwandan genocide against the Tutsis in 1994. Most Rwandans are Christians, with Roman Catholics making up 43% of the population and Protestants making up 37%. Only a small percentage of Rwandans identify as Muslim or adhere to traditional African religions. Many Rwandans blend Christian beliefs with traditional African practices and beliefs. The most widely spoken language in Rwanda is Kinyarwanda, spoken by nearly all Rwandans. It is closely related to Kirundi, spoken in the neighboring country of Burundi. French and English are also official languages in Rwanda, with English becoming more prominent in recent years, Rwandan cuisine draws on local crops and ingredients to create flavorful and filling dishes. While the cuisine has some outside influences, Rwanda's high altitude and fertile soil allow for unique native foods to thrive. Umutsima is a dough made from maize or sorghum that is served in many Rwandan households. It is usually served with other dishes, mainly stews and soups. Igihaza is a stew made from boiled squash cut into pieces with the peel intact. Beans, meat and vegetables can be added to the squash stew to make a hearty and comforting stew. Variations can include peanuts or potato greens. This popular dish consists of cassava leaves cooked with peanut sauce the cassava leaves are cleaned, boiled, and then simmered in a tomato and peanut-based sauce. Dried fish is sometimes added for a savory touch. Isombe is filling and nutritious. Isambaza is a small fish found in the lakes of Rwanda. It is usually fried with salt and served as a snack. It can also be served in a soup mixed with different vegetables such as onions, tomatoes, and carrots. From early kingdoms to colonial influence to civil war and genocide, Rwanda has endured tremendous hardship, but also moments of progress. The first inhabitants of Rwanda were the Twa people, a pygmy group who settled the region around 8000 BC. Starting in the 11th century AD, the Hutu people moved into the area 
followed by the Tutsi in the 15th century. The Tutsi established several small kingdoms and by the 19th century had consolidated control under the Kingdom of Rwanda, ruled by the Mwami or King. The Hutu and Tutsi group shared a common language and culture with the Tutsi, comprising the ruling class. In the late 19th century, European colonizers arrived in Rwanda. First the Germans, and later the Belgians, exerted control over Rwanda. The Belgians solidified the divide between Hutus and Tutsis, designating the Tutsis as the superior race fit to rule over the Hutus. After World War II, Hutus began to resist Belgian rule and Tutsi power. Rwanda gained independence from Belgium in 1962. However, tensions between the Hutus and Tutsis exploded into civil war and violence. Over the next decades, both groups traded control over the government as military coups and reprisal massacres shook the nation. In 1994, Hutu extremists enacted a horrific genocide against the Tutsis and moderate Hutus, killing 800,000 people in just three months. The genocide finally ended when the Rwandan Patriotic Front, a Tutsi-led rebel group, took control of the country. In the years after the genocide, Rwanda has made significant progress in rebuilding and stabilizing the country. The government has focused on ethnic reconciliation, development and transforming the economy. While Rwanda still faces challenges like poverty, its advancements in areas like healthcare and technology point to a more promising future. Rwanda has been on a remarkable journey of economic change. Despite its small size and troubled history, the country has managed to turn things around, focusing on different sectors to build a more diverse and resilient economy. For a long time, farming was the main source of livelihood in Rwanda. Growing crops like coffee, tea and pyathrum was crucial for the economy. Over the years, the government has worked hard to modernize agriculture, using new technology to make farming more efficient. But Rwanda is not just about farming anymore. The country has expanded into other areas like tourism, information technology and financial services. The capital city, Kigali, has become a bustling center for business and innovation, attracting both local and international companies. It now has a GDP of $11 billion. What made a big difference is the government's commitment to good governance and creating a friendly environment for businesses. They've made it easier for people to start and run businesses, earning Rwanga praise from around the world. This focus on efficiency and transparency has helped Rwanda become one of the fastest growing economies in the region Building better roads, bridges and energy sources has also been a priority. By connecting remote areas to cities and improving trade routes, the government is making it easier for people to get around and do business. The Kigali Innovation City is a symbol of Rwanda's ambition to be known for ideas and technology. Rwanda is also thinking about the environment they're working on using more renewable energy sources like solar and hydroelectric power. This not only helps the economy, but also makes sure that growth is sustainable and doesn't harm the environment. Of course, Rwanda still faces challenges like poverty and inequality, but the government is actively working on ways to address these issues and make sure everyone benefits from the country's growth. Rwanda's story is one of bouncing back, changing the way things are done, and looking ahead. Rwandan literature is marked by a blend of traditional storytelling and contemporary narratives. One prominent figure is Scholastique Mukasonga, an author known for works like Our Lady of the Nile, which delves into the complexities of identity and belonging. Mukasonga's writing skillfully weaves personal and historical threads, offering readers an exploration of Rwandan life. 
In visual arts, Rwandan artist Emmanuel Nkuranga has gained recognition for his contemporary paintings that often explore themes of resilience and hope. His work, characterized by vibrant colors and symbolic imagery, reflects both personal experiences and broader societal narratives. Rwanda's film industry has seen the emergence of talented directors and producers. Joel Karakizi, for example, directed the critically acclaimed film The Mercy of the Jungle, which follows the journey of two soldiers during the Congolese Civil War. The film not only highlights the impact of conflict, but also explores themes of friendship and survival. If you enjoyed this video on Rwanda, you'll love this next one.